All right, I think it's about time. So, I'm going to talk about why I think Zenla Zone Zero is going to perform very well in the coming future, right? It doesn't it doesn't mean in a few days from now. It doesn't mean even in a couple weeks from now. I'm talking about in the next, like, five, uh, in, like, like, two plus updates. I think it's going to become one of the actually the best performing gacha games on the market. And I'll tell you why. There's a, I have a few reasons, right? Now, I'll preface this by saying a lot of what I'm about to say is speculative, but it's not it's not baseless things. I'm I'm basing these things on what, uh, what Hoyverse has done in previous games. Uh, more, more specifically, like, Star Rail, because I'm, like, I played a lot of that game. And also, this is not a video of me just, like, stating all the pros about, uh, like all the good things about Zelda Zone Zero, it's it's more like a video me stating all the things about Zelda Zone Zero that I think is going to make it successful in the future. Okay, so the, uh, by the way, I'm reading out from like a a notepad that I wrote like 30 minutes ago because uh, it's kind of hard for me to like do that do this on the go. So I'm gonna start off with preface or like it's talking about the story. Okay, so obviously initially the story in this game originally got a lot of flack. Because it was boring and uninteresting and uninteresting in my opinion yes this was true in chapter one first of all i'll i'll address chapter two and stuff later in my opinion honkai star rail was very similar to this now i didn't hear people saying it's necessarily that hsr story was boring but now i will say people probably were not saying that because there was not as much of a uh narrative to hate the game as there is for Zenless Zone Zero, but I won't get into that in this video. This is purely a video on why I think Zenless Zone Zero will perform well in the future, okay? HSR's story started out as, like, if I had to say, pretty mid. Um, it, it, there was really nothing, like, in the in, in the story that was, like, oh my god, like, this is, like, the best thing I've ever played, right? If you look to the recent HSR updates, to the, let's look at the entire Pentacone arc, like, the whole story, right? That, I don't, I don't know a single person who's said like at least that I've heard that that story was was bad in any way. I, I've never heard. I have not heard anybody say that that story is mid or, or whatever, right? But yeah, in that the story in the Herda Space Station, the original story, uh, and even I guess even in the even in Bellabog, the story was like it was kind of hard to focus at some points because it was like a little you know, it was a, the story was a, like a little sleeper. I'll be honest. Um, but in this game, I mean, yeah, it started out like that too. Now I'll get into uh right now chapter two of the Endless Zone Zero story. I think chapter two is actually quite good so far. I'm not, I don't think I've entirely completed it, so it's not like I'm at liberty to talk about the entirety of the story of Zone Zero so far. I haven't gotten to chapter three yet, uh, but I have beaten like the Bellabog arc, right? And I'm moving on from that now. So I, yeah, as you can see, I'm like level, I'm level 29 right now. So like, I'm like on the cusp of being level 30. So I've gotten to some, some end game content. So that's like what I'll, that's why I'm kind of at liberty to talk about that later about the combat and stuff. So, but as far as the story goes, I actually think the Bellabog arc of the story is very interesting and it's quite engaging. Now I will say the reason why it's so engaging is because of the way that they tell the story. If this, if this Bellabog arc was told in the, the classic Hoyoverse fashion of like, characters are like staring at the screen or like characters are just like standing in a circle like idle animation like just talking right and eventually every once in a while they go like you know what i mean like just like emoting every once in a while right like but just like having the same dialogue bubble at the bottom yeah then that would be boring but the way that this story or the way that this game tells its story in that comic book fashion is just so engaging and even for like mediocre story it turns it into something that you can at least pay attention to and at least like know what's going on without having to focus on it right because you can tell because it's all drawn out right so the way that it's all drawn out into different scenes without having to require too much like time and uh investment i guess from hoyaverse to make like full cut scenes for everything so at that point it's basically an anime right having it in this like a cut scene form where like a lot of it is drawn out and you can tell what's going on but without having to like read everything that makes the even a mediocre story so much more captivating i think this is going to scale so i think right now i i okay i wouldn't call the entire story mediocre i think that's like a little bit of a that's a little bit of a disservice to like the bellabog arc i think it's good and it's fun right i would say it's a it's this the story is pretty good right but i think in the future if and I would say I would even go as far to say when because I don't think Hoyvers does a bad job with story at all Especially like getting progressively better Especially if you look at Honkai Star Rail if you look at like Honkai Impact Third, right? These games have such elaborate deep and complex and just good stories, right? Um, that I think 
So Sandless Zone Zero will follow the exact same pattern. I think the story will just get better as time goes on. With the systems that they have in place to tell the story, like the comic books, like their amazing cutscenes that Hoybers does in pretty much all of their games, right? Um, I think we're going to see... A, an absolutely amazing and captivating story now obviously along with the story you have tvs i actually don't mind the tvs uh, in the later parts of the story i think i actually kind of look forward to the tvs now and obviously in the beginning of the game i was along with the train uh with everybody else talking about the tvs being like oh the tvs are the tvs are annoying they're a pain yeah i agree they were a pain in the beginning of the story in chapter one um anytime i saw the tv screen pop up i was like oh my god like, bro real on like why you know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to play the goddamn game, get some story. I don't need to, like, nowadays, or I guess, like, now, when I see the, uh, when I see TVs, I'm like, okay, well, this is gonna be, like, a fun minigame. It oftentimes, it is. It is often a fun minigame. Uh, and I think if you still, I think if you still are, like, hating on this TV as being like, oh, but every TV is boring. I, no matter what, all the TVs are boring and lame and whatever, like, at that point, like, like, what, what do you, you just want the game to just be, like, a combat simulator? I mean, like, that's what you want, then cool. I mean, like, the TVs are incorporating, like, in, in Chapter 2, the TVs start to incorporate a lot more combat, as opposed to just, like, the same old, like, boring mini games. And the mini games that they do include, I actually think are kind of fun. Like, they're, they're basically puzzles, right? And I think, um, if you at least have, like, the brain power of a 5th grader, you can do these puzzles. They might take a little bit. They took it, some of them took me a little bit, okay? But I enjoy, like, the train ones where you have to, like, build a train track. I might be crazy. Like, listen, if I'm a mint picker, if I'm crazy for that, then I'm, I'm a crazy mint picker, okay? But I think that's fun, all right? And I think puzzle content that, like, challenges your, your brain or whatever, I think is in enjoyable. And it, like, brings more life and uh, variety to the game. Variety to the game. Overall, about the story, I think the story has a high ceiling for improvement. And, in fact, the highest ceiling for improvement in any gacha game because of the way that they tell their story. So, yeah, I think... When they start incorporating really quality story content and events and, like, plot into the story, it's going to become absolute peak. So, I'll talk about the combat. Now, initially the combat was getting dogged on for being way too easy, right? And the majority of these complaints were stemming from the early game and the story content. Now, in my opinion, I think Hoyo did this on purpose. They made it easy on purpose to be accepting of casual players to the game. This game is not just trying to be, yes, the game was advertised as a combat experience, right? And I don't think that was a mistake. Now, after playing for many hours, I don't think that's a mistake. I think that was a good idea and I'll tell you why. I guarantee you, once you get into, I'm sure, I know many people have gotten here. If you get into like Shiyu defense, right? If you do get into Shiyu, I don't think I've gotten very far at all. I got into like, it's like, the fourth thing maybe if that yeah i got to four and i got an a because i think i don't have the right oh wait no i, I think i'm just under yeah it's 33 and my characters are 30 so um yeah i'm a little under leveled but yeah i think genuinely you if you're if you're saying that the game is just button mashing and stuff like that in the beginning yes you're right you can get away easily easily get away with button mashing i'm not gonna sit here and defend the game and that hard and be like oh yeah it's not button mashing though it's, it's really not you're actually not button mashing you're actually thinking without knowing it like i don't know i don't even care in the beginning of the game, yes, you can button mash. I don't, give, I don't give a fuck, right? Later in the game, once you get around here to this end game content, there's, there's the button mashing thing goes away. Try to do shoe defense while button mashing. You can't. Yeah. Once you start getting into end game modes like shoe defense or even certain story missions that are like, that can, certain story bosses that that can actually be difficult. Um, if you're underinvested, you'll notice the game is no longer as easy as it was in the early game. And the game is demanding on you to utilize these complex combat mechanics that are built into the game that you just previously were not required or incentivized to use. But now, in this end game content, you are incentivized to use that so you can clear it faster and get the most rewards. And you'll notice you do die if you don't dodge or parry. You are going, you, you will die. The enemies do damage in the, in the end game content. If you d and if you're dodging and parrying, you won't notice that obviously because you're dodging and parrying and you're not getting hit. But if you get hit every once in a while, you'll be like, okay, well, I'm at half health now. Some one of my characters is at half health because I let her get hit a couple times. So you know what I mean? Like, you'll notice if you actually are just mashing and not reacting and not playing the game. I guess you could say you're you're gonna not you're not gonna have the best and most efficient time, right? Um. Now, what I think the beauty of this is the beauty of this hard content only really being in the end game modes. It's because it's also accepting of hyper casual players 
to just not have to do that. Hyper casual players don't even have to play those end game modes and they can still have fun with the combat, have fun in the rest of the game and all these other things in the game that the game has to offer that are like non-combat or hardcore related that you can just do. That way it's accepting of yes the hardcore audience and the casual audience. And I think that's a great business move on Hoyo versus part, which is why it wraps into this overall uh idea that I have of Zenless Zone Zero going to be progressively improving and progressively becoming a more successful game just market wide. Alright. Next I'll get into the design. I don't think many people will disagree that the game visually looks like one of the best, if not the best, out of any of the gotchas. It, the game, the overworld is, the aesthetic is pleasing to the eye. It's very easy to look at. Um, you, you, you just can't deny that. Everything is just so, like, I don't know how to describe it. I can use, like, it's vibrant, it's soft, um, you know what I mean? It's like, it's very, very stimulating, I guess. It's pleasing, and I, there's nothing wrong with anything I just said. It's bright, and it's captivating, and that's what you need. The, the character design. I think the character design is unique, it's vibrant, um, and it actually has started to grow on me a lot more. Initially, I saw the character design, and I was like, okay, well, these are, like, they're not that cool. Or, I actually, I'm starting to appreciate the intricacies of these designs, right? There are some designs I obviously don't like. I don't like Lycan, I don't like Piper, um, and I'm glad I didn't get these fucking characters, um, but there are characters that I like a lot. I like a lot Anby. Anby is probably my favorite, one of my favorite looking characters in the game. I like Grace a lot. I like Corrin. I like her design, that is. I like the sage green hair. The, I like the black and green color styles. That's why I like Anby and Corrin a lot. Because you got like the the sage green hair with like the, the black outfit. And you have like the purple and orange-ish eyes with like the whole get up going on. And her cool ass like pizza cutter weapon. It's awesome. Uh, Anby. Really satisfying to play in my opinion, but also her design is really cool. She has um like this black and green thing going on. I'm I'm a lover of that. These little straps. These things. I could simp for Andy all day long. I'm sorry, but like it is what it is. Uh, these characters are just unique. I like these characters a lot. All right, Kaleda. Kaleda is one of these one of the characters that's definitely grown on me. Um, after playing the story especially, I think Kaleda is cool. Her character design is awesome. This like hair, whatever is like huge hair. Um, her eye patch, her orange, whole like fiery design. Um, her her hammer, it could be bigger, I guess. Uh, it could be cute if she had a bigger hammer. Um, but yeah, I think Kaleda is one of the coolest characters in the game. Um, but yeah, and lastly about the whole aesthetic thing, the music is fitting, it's lively, uh, and it's it's hard to turn off. I must say, it's hard to turn off. And HSR, I find myself sometimes I like I, not that HSR music is bad. I really like HSR's music as well, but. The, um, also the NPCs are, Jesus Christ, the NPCs in this game are just insane. Sometimes in HSR, I'll turn off the in-game music and just, like, p play my own playlist or whatever while I grind, specifically. In story mode, obviously, I, and when I'm playing story, I obviously turn it back on for the, you know, for the whole vibes, right? But, um, in ZZZ, I don't find myself wanting to do that at all. Now, I will say, I can find that changing in the future. I can find that changing it will be if... You know, I get used to the music. Like, I already recognize this as, like, the the overworld soundtrack, right? Like, I can see this gets a little annoying over time. But, obviously, you're not staying in here for extended periods of time like I am right now. Um, you're not just, like, walking around mint-picking. Uh, like, chest-picking like I was earlier. Um, I'm just doing this because I'm not going to be able to focus and talk at the same time if I'm, like, in combat. Um, overall, I think the aesthetic of the game is something that's going to keep player retention up and keep new players coming to the game i think it's just overall super enjoyable okay overall i think that about wraps up i might have missed one or two things because i i'll keep in mind i like it was like 2 p.m and i start streaming at 2 30 and i'm like wait a minute i don't have anything to do um like i don't have anything to like make a youtube video about so i'm like oh wait like i got to uh i, got, I gotta i gotta do something right so i like you try to type this out. I so I typed this out in like 30, 30 minutes. Like this, this whole thing. So I probably missed a couple things. Uh, it's that's my bad. Uh, but hey, nobody nobody minds, right? All the things that I just mentioned, um, I think are at least the main points that are going to culminate and create a game that is going to steadily improve and get better in the future. I think this game has really set the grounds and set the foundations for itself to get infinitely better. I'll recap the points very quickly. The story. The story has... Th this game has the best storytelling in pretty much any gacha that I can think of. It keeps you captivated with the comics and the cutscenes, right? And combine that with... Combine that with good story content, like Honkai Star Rail or Honkai Impact 3rd, for example, right? And you're gonna have a cinematic masterpiece. The combat. 
you can either e make it easier or hard for yourself do the end game content or not casual non-casual whatever you want to do you can do it okay the aesthetics the aesthetic is something that i can look at all day long it's just so good you know what i mean and when that when push comes to shove the aesthetics of the game are really going to determine how much time you want to spend on it let's see if she's gonna hey wait okay i don't think she kicks the ball back to me so sad wait does it all right stop stop i'm adhd in right now anyways yeah those are my opinions on the game again this is not a video trying to highlight all the good things about thumbs on zero i left a lot of good things out and there's also a lot of things a few things about the game that i could say could be improved this is just these are just my reasons why i do think thumbs on zero is going to be a great game in the coming future and it will only get better all right thank you bye Bruh.